Doing today's introduction is Dr. John Kelly. John is the immediate past chair of the Generation for International Forum and the former chair of the International Atomic Energy Agency Standing Advisory Group on Nuclear Energy. John also has the distinctive uh, position of being the first webinar presenter in our webinar series. And he's experienced, he's now retired, had a distinguished career through the US Department of Energy. John. Uh, thank you, Berta. And it's my great pleasure to uh, actually welcome uh, Jan to the webinar series. Uh, we've known each other for several years, going back to when I was at DOE. Uh, but he's now a, a senior researcher at the, uh, uh, the, the Research Center Raj. And, um, you know, from he's been working uh, closely with the, uh, the molten salt uh, reactor technology. Um, and he's led, led several um, national programs devoted to the molten salt technology. And um, so uh, Jan is a, a, a representative of the Czech Republic, is, is the working party of the scientific issues of the fuel cycle of the OECD uh, Nuclear Energy Agency, a member of the MSR uh, Provisional System Steering Committee of the Generation 4 program. Um, as a representative of Uranium and a member of the High Scientific uh, Council of the European Nuclear Society. Uh, Jan earned his uh, MS in chemical engineering and PhD in uh, nuclear uh, fuel technology at the University of Chemistry and uh, Technology in Prague. So, Jan. My colleague, please. Okay. So thank you very much for introduction, John. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning in America, good afternoon in Europe, good very early morning in East Asia and Australia, and good very late afternoon in Western Asia. So uh, it is a pleasure for me uh, to provide you by information about the Czech experimental program on molten salt reactor technology development, which plays the important role in our domestic nuclear uh, development activities. Uh, the Czech Republic is a relatively small country, but we are active in nuclear, and nuclear share in our country is about 35%. So. Uh, we are uh, active in this, this area and, and we also plan to increase uh, the nuclear power in, in the Czech Republic. Moreover, all our reactors were made by Czech industry. So therefore we realize that we need to be active also in the development of advanced nuclear technologies and the MSR technology was selected as a very promising for us. So beginning of our activities uh, reaches practically the second half of 90s and uh, our first approach uh, in this area was motivated by the effort to utilize this technology within the partitioning and transmutation systems. It was quite attractive uh, in, in the second half of, of 19s to be involved in this system. So originally we believed that the combination of accelerator driven technology and liquid fuel could be the suitable solution for the incineration of transuranium elements and long lived fission products from spent nuclear fuel. So the first studies of this system, I mean this subcritical molten salt, yeah. So the first studies 
uh, were done in 1998 and uh, the year after, yeah, in 1999, we submitted our first proposal to the Ministry of Industry and Trade uh, of the Czech Republic. So next slide, please. Uh, the first activities uh, were initiated by Dr. Miloslav Hron, so you can see him in the uh, on, on the picture. So uh, he practically uh, had some uh, obtained some some good experience in in this area uh, because he spent some some time in uh, the Los Alamos Natural, National Laboratory, and uh, when he returned. Uh, so he then leaded the Czech molten salt program through the whole first decade of the century. Uh, for us, the big motivation uh, at the beginning was organization of, of the ATTA 99 conference, uh, which was held in Prague, Pruhonice, and uh, we had a chance to discuss our program with several distinguished scientists who attended the conference. So I mentioned uh, those in uh, some of them here yeah, on um, the photography. So I would like to, to uh, mention Alvin Weinberg, Charlie Bauman, McTodd and David Williams from United States, Vladimir Prusakov from Russian Federation, so famous, famous person in in the fluoride technology, yeah, and Peter Wilson uh, from the United Kingdom, who also helped us to understand thorium uranium fuel cycle. Uh, from uh, the Czech side, here I have uh, two names Dr. Ivo Peka, who was a founder of Czech nuclear fluoride technology research, and uh, for sure Milo Hron. So the next slide, please. Uh, so our proposal yeah, to open the national project uh, was accepted by the ministry uh, in 99. And the Ministry of Industry and Trade began to support these activities in 2000. So Right from the start, the R&D activities included also a significant experiment program. Uh, the program took full advantage of the opportunities offered by the Nuclear Research Center in Zesh, where uh, research and experimental nuclear reactors have been placed side by side with radiochemical complex and fluorine chemistry laboratories. So for an experimental MSR program, this is, uh, I guess, the ideal combination. Next slide. <clears throat> so, however, uh, the uh, Ministry uh, of Industry and Trade had just from the beginning a strong requirement for us that the research must be realized in collaboration with uh, our, I mean, Czech nuclear industry. So therefore, our MSR projects were always solved by consortium of Czech research institutions and uh, industrial companies. So I have here the list of the main organizations and companies involved in the consortium just from the beginning. So it was UJV Zesh, uh, formal name Nuclear Research Institute. Uh, it was original leading company, then Research Center Zesh, which is present leading company, Contest FHT, uh, this is Metallurgical uh, Research and Development Company, Energovieskrm Brno, uh, Institute of Nuclear Physics of the Academy of Sciences. Uh, this uh, uh, Academy of Sciences was involved only uh, relatively in the beginning of the period when we were uh, involved in the subcritical systems and then the faculty of nuclear scientists sciences and physical engineering Škoda J J C J S. Uh, this is Škoda nuclear machinery so this is the producer of 
all nuclear reactors in, in Central Europe, yeah? so I mean on the territory of Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, and the company Miko. So, well, so the, to the uh, next slide. Uh, so, uh, just from the beginning, yeah, uh, we uh, made uh, some experimental program also uh, focused on the subcritical systems, but approximately in 2004, we practically abandoned the, uh, this idea to continue in development of subcritical systems and uh, uh, all our activities uh, practically identified uh, our, ours with the idea of molten salt breeder reactor uh, as it was proposed by Oak Ridge. Uh, so uh, also I would like to mention that uh, we discussed our program also with, with uh, John Richard Engel and McTodd uh, from Oak Ridge who visited uh, Zesh in 2002 and who gave us valuable practical advice. Uh, I hope you know that uh, Ho participated in molten salt reactor experiment in the 60s and Dr. Engel was uh, chief engineer of, of the whole project. Well, uh, so just from the beginning, uh, the technology uh, developed uh, so, so we, we are uh, involved in, in the development of several uh, areas. So we contributed uh, to the uh, knowledge to reactor physics, core design and safety of structural, mat and structural material development, and also uh, for, to the technologies of, uh, which uh, are applicable within the molten salt online reprocessing and uh, we uh, were also uh, involved in the verification uh, of uh, other, other uh, materials area and, and so and so. Just from the beginning uh, we solved two important projects. It was uh, the project uh, Sphinx and then fluoride reprocessing. And we also were involved uh, in the activities uh, of some international uh, organization, like uh, also Aratom, uh, International Atomic Energy Agency, and we also contributed to the Generation 4 uh, as representatives of Euratom. So to the main experimental activities, uh, in, uh, in uh, molten salt reactor physics and neutronics. Uh, so uh, it was investigation uh, of MSR physics, uh, which was focused on the experimental measurement of fluoride salt neutronics at the LR0 reactor and LVR15 reactor in the research center Zesh. So, uh, basic principles of the method uh, of measurement were successfully verified and uh, selected neutronics data uh, of several fluoride salt mixture containing uh, uranium and thorium they were obtained by irradiation of so-called instrumented probes which were uh, inserted into the central part of LR0 reactor core uh, where the standard VVR fuel uh, assemblies surrounded this core served as neutron driver. So uh, here you can see uh, the uh, pictures of the uh, LR0 reactor core, yeah, drawings uh, with the uh, position of individual uh, fuel assemblies and in central part uh, the uh, inserted zone with uh, some material uh, of testing, yeah, typically also uh, the uh, molten salts. And on the uh, picture in, in the right, on the right, there is uh, the experimental channel, which was put it usually in the central part of the reactor instead of one 
fuel assembly. Yeah. So to the next slide. Uh, here I would like to uh, inform you also about the experimental activities uh, devoted to the fuel cycle technology. Uh, here uh, the development of thorium uranium fuel cycle covered uh, both uh, the uh, verification of, of MSR liquid fuel reprocessing and uh, the laboratory investigation of online reprocessing technology. So I am now speaking about the uh, activities during the first decade of, of this century. Yeah. Uh, so you can see on the pictures uh, the production of uh, our production of uranium tetrafluoride, thorium tetrafluoride, preparation of, of liquid samples uh, for uh the uh subsequent measurement of neutronics in in reactors uh so those are th those uh green uh, green samples are a mixture of of uh, the carrier salt typical lithium beryllium uh, salt yeah fly B with uranium tetrafluoride and the picture on the uh, laboratory studies uh in, in our laboratory or in, in UJV mainly. So please, the next slide. Uh, in the next slide, I would like to, to inform you about uh, the uh, activities in the development of structural material. Uh, because of Hastelloy N was not available for us, uh, we decided to develop own nickel alloy for molten salt uh, technologies. And uh, we asked uh, Škoda Nuclear Machinery and uh, later on also the Comtes company uh, for, and we asked them uh, to develop uh, own nickel alloy suitable for uh, this uh, technology, I mean for molten salt reactor technology. So, uh, you can see uh, the composition of our original nickel alloy, which is called Moniker, and we produce it just uh, experimentally. We, we produce it experimentally uh, also today. Uh, so um, approximately in, in 2011, yeah, we could say that we have own nickel alloy moniker. Yeah. Okay, to the next slide, please. Uh, so, um, some important milestone was in 2012. Uh, so, our uh, experimental program in MSR physics and neutronics was limited by the fact that we did all experiments uh, and neutronics measurement with flyby salt, which was composed from uh, lithium fluoride with natural lithium. Uh, we had no uh, any lithium-7 fluoride, and uh, our uh, experiments uh, were practically devaluated yeah, by the presence of lithium-6 isotope, which is uh, in uh, natural lithium. However, thanks to our scientific contacts with our US colleagues, mainly with Professor uh, Per Peterson from University of California, Berkeley, Charles Forsberg from uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and David Holcomb from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, we opened the discussion about the collaboration in the development of uh, MSR and FHR, yeah. and uh, our common proposal was that Oak Ridge National Laboratory will provide us by original flyby cool and salt, which contains a uh, highly pure uh, lithium-7 isotope, and that we will do our neutronic experiments with this salt. So, uh, in 2012, the Ministry of Industry and Trade and U.S. Department of Energy signed Memorandum of Understanding and based 
on this memorandum of understanding in uh, 2013 we obtained about 75 kilograms of uh, the molten salt reactor experiment cool and salt from oak ridge so uh, the year after we started our experimental program and uh, from uh, 2015 also our uh, oak ridge partners uh, uh, oak ridge uh, researchers participated in the evaluation of, of the measured data so here are the photos uh, how we discussed it uh, in at the u.s department of energy and photos from transport of the salt uh, then uh, the preparation of the salt for the experiment and and view into the uh, core of our r zero reactor with uh, the container with this salt uh, containing lithium-7. So uh, flyby with lithium-7 is used only for neutronic experiments in, in uh, the research centers and in uh, the uh, UJV Nuclear Research Institute. Uh, now I would like to inform you about the uh, present activities. Yeah. So, uh, the present program is a follow up of the uh, and the broadening of existing Czech activities in MSR. And uh, the new MSR project was approved by Minister of Industry and Trade uh, in uh, 2016, and the program is running from uh, 2017. And the program is now granted by the Technological Agency of the Czech Republic. So here, uh, the present program is also solved uh, by the consortium of uh, Czech research institutions and industrial companies. And also, it has a uh, quite uh, important area in the experimental research. So here is the list of uh, the uh, members of the consortium so one change was that uh, in the current project uh, research center Zesh, my company uh, is the leading company of, of the program but uh, uh, i would like to uh, practically uh, uh, i would like to inform you that that skoda nuclear machinery and and company miko are very important members of uh, uh, our consortium and both are uh, the companies of uh, czech nuclear industry well so uh, the present project next slide please uh, the, the present project uh, has following work packages this is molten salt reactor physics and salt neutronics molten salt uh, fuel cycle technology development of structural materials for fluoride molten salts yeah uh, molten salt reactor and fluoride salt high temperature reactor material studies uh, this includes also the molten salt loop, pro loop program yeah and development of uh, the components uh, suitable for a molten salt uh, reactor and fluoride high temperature salt reactor technology and finally also some basic studies including uh, non-proliferation issues and physical protection it is uh, the part of of our studies of the thorium uranium fuel cycle and for sure for us the continuation of the collaboration with uh, u.s partners under this uh, memorandum of, of understanding is important yes so <clears throat> uh, then at the next slide uh, let me to comment some results achieved in molten salt reactor physics and salt neutronics so in the picture and photo in this slide you can see the scheme scheme of the LR0 reactor and the view into the reactor core so here we uh, measured several neutron spectra in graphite and uh, in selected fluoride salts 
I mean uh, the salt, uh, free nitrous, uh, sodium, uh, sodium uh, fluoride, lithium fluoride mixture, fly B with natural lithium at the beginning and later on fly B with uh, uh, lithium 7 and uh, also the spectra uh, of fluorine because uh, our colleagues found that that the, there are some some uh, wrong data in the database about fluorine. So to measure fluorine spectra, we used Teflon blocks as measurement of gaseous fluorine would be practically impossible in in the reactor. Uh, so um, the uh, existing measurement in the uh, reactor, I mean with uh, the salts, were done. Uh, at the room temperature uh, because of uh, we had uh, no suitable equipment uh, till now to uh, measure to, to realize the measurement at the high temperature typically the, the temperatures uh, of the uh, molten salt reactor uh, working range yeah? I mean 500 or so, the, from 500 to 750 but we plan to do it uh, next year. So uh, please, the next slide. Uh, in this slide, you can uh, see how we prepared the inserted zone for the neutronic measurement uh, with flyby. So the zone uh, on the pictures here, uh, is a special container which uh, is filled by uh, hot flyby from the transport container which we obtained from Oak Ridge. Yeah, so the, the method how to fill it is by siphoning effect. And then after the salt became cool, it was instrumented and put into the experimental channel uh, of the reactor yeah, and was then placed into the center of uh, R zero reactor core. So as I uh, mentioned uh, till now, all measurement uh, we made in R zero was done at the room temperature. So it means the salt inside the in, uh, inside the container was solid. Yeah. So, uh, however, now. We started the program to measure the flyby neutronics at temperature range corresponding to real temperatures of molten salt. Reactor, please, next slide. Okay. Uh, so uh, how we plan to, to realize that? Yeah, because it is impossible to have a heating system inside the reactor. Yeah, it is impossible as concerning the reactor safety, as concerning uh, the uh, practical pra practical experimental measurement of, of neutronics and criticality and so. So uh, we our choice uh, how to how to uh, heat the salt is described uh, here. Yeah, so. Uh, the first, we need to preheat uh, the, it will be new flyby container, yeah, much more bigger than uh, the uh, former one. Yeah, So uh, we must preheat the uh, new container or, this, or, or the salt inside the uh, new container outside of the reactor in some oven yeah, to about 800 centigrade. And then we will insert the container uh, or the uh, yeah uh, the container uh, into the uh, one uh, vessel and then into the experimental channel yeah and uh, because uh, this container uh, will be surrounded uh, by insulation vessel so the uh, the whole um, system or whole set will be much more bigger and will be in the reactor instead of seven fuel assemblies. Yeah. So uh, finally, when the uh, channel 
uh, experimental channel with, with the flyby container will be inside the reactor. We start pumping uh, the water into the reactor because the reactor uh, reached the criticality by increasing of uh, the water level. Yeah. So here I have the information that uh, the series of measurement will be done and several temperatures reached by gradual cooled down of the salt in the container in, in the reactor and the typical time for individual experiment will be about two to three hours. So we will be in a hurry and uh, now it is quite a very, very big challenge for us. Well, <clears throat> so uh, in the following slides, you can see how we will, uh, how will look uh, this container. Uh, here is some, some set of the equipment of the container and you, you can see uh, the different temperatures inside the container and the maximum temperature is uh, of, of the reactor. Yeah, of the water in the reactor, uh, the maximum temperature should be below 60 centigrade. So here we calculated it uh, for uh, 57 centigrade. Uh, at the next slide, uh, you will see uh, schematic design of individual parts and how the parts will be uh, will will be operated, will be moved one into the second, yeah, so uh, flyby module. So flyby module uh, will be done uh, from uh, the Nike alloy uh, in Cornell uh, 625, then will be uh, thermal insulation. The third is cylindrical vessel from stainless steel. And uh, the last one, uh, <coughs> uh, the biggest one will be uh, aluminium uh, hepta heptadron, we, we call it here, yeah? and this will be uh, this will be put into the uh, reactor. On the next slide, there is uh, more more uh, detailed uh, drawing of uh, this set. Yeah, yeah. So so this is this is here. Uh, uh, and uh, in the next slide, please, uh, here, here is uh, the view and into the reactor and, and here is uh, uh, drawn the uh, placement of, of this polyhedron vessel for flyby uh, in the central, central part of the reactor that it is instead of, as I mentioned, seven fuel assemblies, okay? Uh, now, I would like uh, to move uh, to the yeah. So, so here is ah uh, yeah. Here is one more slide uh, about the current status. Uh, so today, uh, present status is that the zone and other components are now manufactured in our workshop in uh, Research Center Zesh. And uh, it was necessary, practically significantly ad adapt the bottom part of the uh, reactor uh, LA0 core. So uh, concerning the plans, so we believe that uh, the manufacture of uh, this new zone will be finished before, before uh, this Christmas. Yeah, and then after the approval, which we need from the State Office for Nuclear Safety. We plan to start the cold experiments in the uh, first quarter of 2020, yeah? and uh, the hot experiments in the second quarter of next year, yeah? of, of 2020. So, as I mentioned, this is now a big challenge for us. And for sure, uh, this experimental program, you can, you can imagine, is relatively quite costly. Cool. Okay, so uh, now uh, I would like to move to the information about our activities in the area of thorium uranium fuel cycle. So uh, we focused on the investigation of electrochemical separation technologies 
from molten fluoride salt media. Uh, the carrier salt for molten salt reactor working in thermal spectrum is flyby. Yeah? Uh, however, uh, the lithium beryllium uh, f uh, mixture, yeah? lithium beryllium eutectics, is insufficiently electrochemically stable. And therefore, we had to solve how we should do uh, the electrochemical separation. We had to find some more stable carrier salt for electro separation, and that's uh, lithium fluoride, calcium bifluoride eutectics. Yeah. Uh, in the picture, you can see the electrochemical potentials uh, which were measured by uh, UJV Resch for individual separation of uranium, thorium, and some lanthanides in flyby and in, in lithium uh, fluoride, calcium bifluoride. Uh, for your information, uh, the electric separation method we used is linear potential sweep cyclic voltammetry. At the next slide, <coughs> uh, here is information uh, about our development of uh, a reference electrode because uh, for uh, standard, uh, because there is no uh, standard reference electrode for electrochemical measurement in fluoride media. This is the difference if we compare it with chloride media. And therefore, we had to propose own design of the reference electrode based on the electrochemical couple uh, nickel zero nickel two plus. Uh, this area is now studied by UJV Zesh, and UJV now also collaborates with the University of Wisconsin Medicine to investigate the long term stability of the electrode because uh, the stability is um, timely limited. Uh, in the drawings and pictures here, uh, there are a schematic design of reference electrode, electrode set, and photos of the uh, electrode surface. And here you can, inside the circle, yeah, uh, you can see some some small interaction of metallic nickel with the surface of the electrode body. So after some time, it can negatively affect the long-term stability. But uh, for all that this type of, of reference electrode seems to be uh, probably the best one for the fluoride media. Well, so uh, concerning the next, at the next slide is uh, information about the uh, actual work and future, future plans in electrochemistry. So uh, we would like to focus now on quantitative separation of uranium uh, from some lanthanides, typically uranium from gadolinium, because uh, most of other lanthanides were all, all just measure, measured, yeah. And uh, also for updating the rules for uh, nickel, nickel, two plus reference electrode usage, and uh, in collaboration with uh, Joint Research Center Karlsruhe, we would like open the studies. Uh, of electrochemistry of protactinium. And therefore, we just practically finish uh, the preparation of uh, our alpha hot cell. Uh, so uh, we will do that uh, in uh, research centers in our uh, alpha hot cell. <coughs> OK. <coughs> so to the Next slide, please. Uh, OK, uh, information about the current status of structural material development and components for uh, salt reactor technology. Uh, so as I mentioned sooner, the company Comtes developed the Nike alloy moniker. Yeah. And within the present project, Comtes continues in the development of uh, further uh, further development of Monica Alloy. 
uh, in the verification of semi-pilot production. So today they are able uh, to produce uh, ingots of uh, the maximum weight uh, 600 kilograms. Yeah. Uh, so they uh, plan to uh, measure uh, mechanical stability, to do creep tests, radiation embrittlement, and, and to study other behavior. Uh, I also have here uh, the the present task, the influence of hot deformation on recrystallization and and uh, uh, at, at high temperatures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at the next slide, uh, you at the next slide. Okay. Uh, you uh, can see uh, the information about the activities of uh, the company MICO, which is focused on the development of flange gasket systems, so for the, for the connection of, of pipes uh, of uh, uh, molten salt technologies. Um, so uh, this is quite serious problem, uh, how to Connect by by, uh, by the flanges, uh, the uh, tubes with molten salts at high temperatures. So on the slide there are photos and pictures uh, pictures showing the principle how we uh, test uh, the closeness of uh, uh, individual designs of uh, flanges uh, gasket system. Uh, so we uh, typically test it uh, at the with, with flyby uh, salt at the uh, temperature of 600 centigrade. Uh, this is our standard standard temperature for for testing of of uh, flanges gaskets. Okay, to the next slide, please. Uh, in uh, 2017. We uh, built uh, our flyby loop, which should help us to do some corrosion test uh, of selected structural materials, samples not only uh, of moniker, but also other nickel alloys and, and other materials. And uh, for our information, uh, the loop is made from uh, Inconel 718 alloy. And uh, it contains also the freeze valve, yeah, and a relatively primitive pump. Uh, so the lube has about six liters plus uh, the volume of the dump tank, and uh, it is uh, heated by electric power. Okay, at the next slide. Uh, at the next slide, please. Yeah. You can uh, see the photos of, of the uh, loop, how it how it is uh, placed in the laboratories, uh, in the fluoride uh, laboratory of the research center, Zesh. So from the safety reasons, the loop is placed in the box, which is connected with chemical of gas system with special filters and so on. So, uh, so the uh, loop program, as I mentioned, is intended to the material uh, components uh, tests and subsequently for the uh, in some future also from the thermohydraulics experiment and uh, verification of thermohydraulic cord data. Uh, at the next slide, there will be activity done by Škoda nuclear machinery. Yeah. So uh, this is also important part of our project. This is uh, development of pumps for uh, fluoride salt medium. So Škoda nuclear machinery is responsible for the development of impeller uh, for molten fluoride salts. Uh, you can see some photos of uh, this uh, impeller, which is now under uh, development and under some preliminary test. And we would like 
uh, to also finally uh, test this impeller in our loop. So we hope uh, we will do it uh, during next year. So uh, to uh, the conclusions, uh, our program is in the long run focused on experimental development of selected areas of molten salt reactor technology which can be also partially applied for fluoride salt cooled high temperature reactor systems however as i mentioned the czech republic as a relatively small country uh, has no ambition to build now our own molten salt reactor uh, we would like to con but we would like to contribute uh, to the development of this technology and we would like to be a good partner for those countries or companies uh, which will build and deploy molten salt reactor system so as the czech republic intends to continue in the utilization of nuclear power and to increase its present nuclear share the country wants also to appropriately contribute to the development of advanced reactor technologies so present state support of the development of MSR technology should create the condition for Czech companies to be among the suppliers of selected parts of molten salt reactor technology. So here I would like to finish my presentation and I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Euler. If you have questions, um, please type those into the question pane. And while those questions are coming in, uh, we'll just take a quick look at the upcoming webinar presentations that we have scheduled. In December, a presentation uh, on Trezo fuels by Dr. Feltis. In January of the new year, a presentation on thermal hydraulics and liquid metal fast reactors by Dr. Brunschfeld. And in February, a presentation on SFR safety design criteria and safety design guidelines by Dr. By Mr. Kubo. I don't see questions um, coming in just yet. Uh, if you have questions, please do type those into the Q&A pod. Again, thank you, Dr. Euler. I know that we've had um, quite a bit of effort putting this presentation together, and I apologize for the technical issues that we've experienced to, to date, mm -hmm. but I think the presentation was well received, and I appreciate um, all of your efforts, volunteer, to, to put this presentation together. So thank you to all listeners. Okay, there's a question. Is there a cooperation between the Czech side with the Swiss PSI and the MSR research? Uh, yes, so uh, concerning our uh, collaboration uh, between between uh, the Paul Scherer Institute, yes, uh, in Switzerland and the Czech Republic, so uh, we are also, I mean, uh, Research Center Zesh is also involved in a U European project. So today, uh, today the, the new project which started this year is uh, the project Safer. So this is uh, our platform for the collaboration with uh, other uh, with other European uh, institutions and and. Uh, other uh, European countries, uh, uh, but concerning some direct, direct bilateral 
bilateral uh, collaboration, uh, it doesn't exist. Yeah, so so this is only uh, exchange of scientific information. So so we have uh, several uh, several friends and uh, in in uh, Paul Scherer Institute, but uh, there is no uh, any um, contract uh, between uh, Paul Scherer Institute and and uh, for example UJV or uh, Research Center Sesh. Thank you. And a sort of a follow-up type question, what other areas of research are under development in molten salt reactors worldwide? Um, so, so the, the current, current status of the uh, molten salt reactor research is that uh, the absolutely most active uh, are uh, our colleagues in China. So uh, Chinese Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics is responsible for uh, the uh, building, for the building of, of a molten salt reactor. They call it thorium molten salt reactor. Uh, the reactor should be uh, finished uh, at the end of next year. Uh, this is in uh, Wuwei, uh, Wuwei city. This is uh, in in, in uh, northeast China, and uh, the Chinese have uh, uh, we can say fantastic program, and and uh, there is uh, several thousand people involved in 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 this program. So the China is practically practically today number one yeah and for sure we collaborate under the umbrella uh, of uh, generation for international forum uh, yeah under the uh, regional system steering committee of modern salts so the here members are uh, united states Euratom, uh, france uh, switzerland uh, australia uh, and also for sure China or some some and Japan. Some of them are uh, only observers, but but we also collaborate under this uh, under this umbrella. But uh, the China is today the only country which is uh, just building the molten salt reactor. Thank you. Are there any other questions out there for um, Dr. Euler? Again, I want to thank you for uh, taking your time to join us and participate in the GIFT webinar presentations. And our thanks again to today's presenter, Jan. Thank you very much for your efforts in putting this presentation together and for your work in this area. Yeah. So thank you to have a chance to have this lecture for June 4. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Bye bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. It was my great pleasure.